Good evening, and welcome to Candidates Night 2022. I am Shari Simon, and I am the president of the Moraga Citizens Network, more commonly known as MCN. Founded in 2005, MCN is a small but mighty organization dedicated to encouraging participation in the life of Moraga. We do this in a number of ways, but most visibly and notably with the MCN link, our biweekly email that summarizes all that's happening in town. Tonight is our night candidates night. Launched in 2006, they have occurred every two years and have pretty much followed the same format, featuring only our town council candidates. But this year is a night of three substantive firsts. First, we are doing this in partnership with St. Mary's College. As a US News top five Western region university, St. Mary's College is Moraga's largest employer. Each year, they bring approximately 3,600 new residents to our community. And because of St. Mary's College, there are 56,000 living SMC graduates who have gone out into the world and moved beyond Moraga, all having had the same shared experience as those of us sitting here tonight or those of us listening on Zoom. And that is, they called Moraga home. It's pretty amazing to think about SMC in these terms. For so many, St. Mary's College is Moraga and Moraga is St. Mary's College. So it seems incredibly fitting that tonight's event is co-sponsored with the college, that we are here broadcasting live from the Moraga Room, and that Corey Cook, the EVP and provost of St. Mary's College is serving as our moderator. Our second first is that we are doing this tonight, not only in person, or not only on Zoom as we did in 2020, but that we are doing this both live as well as broadcasting this via Zoom. And for those of you sitting here, I want you to know that the numbers are almost are at, a, at about 100 listening in in Zoom. So it is quite the turnout. And I'm assuming for those of you on Zoom, if you can't see the numbers here in the room, I'm guessing we have at least 80 to 85 um, people. Our third first is that we are not simply featuring our town council candidates, but as you are all know, we are also featuring, featuring candidates for the Moraga School Board and the Moraga Orinda Fire District. Our format for this evening while still very much like the first candidates night, we'll have a few tweaks. One, we've added some stretch breaks between featured candidate races. That applies to those of you listening in on Zoom, as well as for those of you who are here with us tonight. Two, the town council portion will occur in two parts. In part one, we'll hear from our two candidates running on a post which means these two candidates are both guaranteed seats on the, count, on the town council. Part two will feature our town council candidates running for the third seat that is also open. This is a two-year term that is a, as it is a continuation of the four-year term originally filled by David Stromberg, who was elected in 2020, but who then resigned in 2021. As for the other two races, the candidates will pretty much follow the standard format. All questions were submitted in advance by members of the community. We selected six questions for each group of candidates 
had best captured the key themes, and these are what we'll then use during tonight's Q&A. As I mentioned earlier, our moderator for this evening is Corey Cook. Corey, as I said, serves as provost and executive vice president at St. Mary's. Prior to joining St. Mary's in 2019, Corey was the founding dean of the School of Public Service at Boise State University. And prior to that, he served as the director of the Leo T. McCarthy Center for Public Service and the Common Good at the University of San Francisco. Corey holds bachelor's degrees in political science and peace and conflict studies from the University of California, Berkeley, and master's and doctoral degrees in political science and public policy from the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Please join me in welcoming our moderator, Corey Cook, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Shari. Hi, everybody. Good evening. We're going to try that again. Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary's College. We're really pleased you're here. Uh, thank you for allowing us to co-host this evening. Uh, we're delighted to uh, to be a partner in this community. Our students are, are particularly excited to uh, have the candidates here this evening. So I'd like to start um, by inviting our two unopposed candidates, uh, Carrie Hillis on the Planning Commission and uh, Mayor Steve Wolicki up to the podium, please. Y'all can clap now too. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to give each of the candidates a 90-second introduction. Uh, and Carrie, you're going to be uh, going first. So welcome. See if I remembered how to do this right. Thank you to the Moraga Citizens Network and St. Mary's College for organizing and hosting tonight's forum. My name is Carrie Hillis, and I will be your council member following the November 8th election. So I'm glad for this opportunity to introduce myself. As until recently, COVID has limited our opportunities to meet one another. My wife and I decided to move to Moraga in 2016. We were drawn here by some of the same things that I'm sure drew many of you. The school's proximity to job centers and the town's beautiful semi-rural character. By the time I'm sworn in, we'll have lived here for almost six years. This means as a family with very young children, we're approaching old guard status. On these lines, when I join the council in December, I will be the only council member with a child in Moraga schools. By the end of my four year term, I'll have three. And I'll also be the only council member uh, that regularly commutes for work. More on these points later, as they are especially important given some of the issues that we have in front of us. As your current planning commission chair and as a public policy professional, I'm looking forward to hitting the ground running with my colleagues from day one. With only 90 seconds to introduce myself, I will ask you to go to carryhillis.com for more information. There's also a section at the bottom of the site, send me a message if you have any questions for me. I'd appreciate your vote on November 8th. I look forward to being your council member and to Athena, Julia, and Isaac as promised, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Thank you, Corey. Good evening, I'm Steve Wallachie. Peggy and I moved to Moraga in 1987 and we happily raised our two daughters here. My previous Moraga experience included 20 years combined on the Design Review Board, the Planning Commission, and the Hacienda Foundation Board of Directors, including leadership positions on each of those organizations. I have over 30 years of technical and project management experience. I'm a retired licensed professional engineer and a former certified public management professional. During my career, I trained in the practice of quality decision-making. I practiced it. And I spent five years building organizational competency in and across Chevron's worldwide operating units. 
I take seriously retaining Moraga's semi-rural character consistent with Moraga's general plan. My pledge in 2018, the, the town council election in 2018 was better decisions, better outcomes. I followed through in pursuing this pledge during my four years on, on council. With re-election, I will continue my focus on making quality decisions representing all of Moraga's residents for all issues. Succeeding at this is, as a council is important, including because my continuing on the council is a significant investment of my and Peggy's precious retirement years. I look forward to working with Carrie and Kendall or David on the town council. I thank the Moraga Community Network, yeah, Network for organizing and conducting this candidate's night. All right, thank you. So uh, we'll give each of the candidates two minutes to please talk about uh, one of the priority issues you have for the coming term. So Carrie, please. So the topic I chose was top priorities for the town. As you've likely heard, Moraga is required by the state to soon submit a housing plan zoning for 1,100 plus new units of housing. In my mind, this plan and its implementation are the most important challenges facing our town and this next council. Earlier in my career, I worked for a client on statewide fire, uh, wildfire response. And I've seen firsthand the devastation that building in areas prone to wildfires can cause. Moraga is a cul-de-sac community with no direct highway access, limited ways in and out of town and surrounded by high fire areas. This reality places Moraga in a potentially dangerous position when considering where to safely house thousands of new residents. That said, wildfire risks are not the only considerations when determining new housing locations. As a working father of three under five, traffic impacts, for example, are also key. If we're building all this housing, how will we avoid serious bottlenecks on our commutes? Or how even as we try to drop off our kids to school? These questions will need to be answered prior to shovels hitting the ground. All this said, there are potential positives that can also come out of this process. The redevelopment of our commercial centers can turn these two mid 20th century strip malls into mixed use gateways to our community. The housing plan will also provide the town an opportunity to build affordable housing for teachers, students, retirees, and other members of our community who are priced out due to astronomical housing costs. While I believe we will find a way to work through this situation, I remain very concerned about how we will accommodate future housing allocations. They come every eight years. As a member of the council, I will do my part to advocate to our legislative leaders that fire hazards be given heightened consideration when weighing future housing allocations. And not to beat a dead horse, you wanna find out more about me, please visit carryellis.com for more information. And I hope you'll vote for me on November 8th. Steve. Thank you, Corey. Um, of the five options I chose, affordable housing. Uh, the state of California has assigned uh, 11,118 11, additional housing units to Moraga, of which 673 are in the affordable income category. This is a concern to many. I could spend a long time talking about details. Following are a few summary details and my take. Moraga is pursuing conforming to the state's requirements for the updated housing element based upon 673 affordable units. Almost all municipalities in, in California are unhappy, but there's really been no success at fighting these impositions. The state promises hard responses to not conforming and subsequently following through. The target for final approval by the state of California of Moraga's updated plan is the end of January. Moraga's strategy is to focus high density development in the two downtown shopping center areas. It includes rezoning underutilized buildings to mixed use. This is potentially a win-win if the shopping centers get re revitalized. 
Moraga is responsible for zoning. Project implementation requires willing developers. This is an unknown. Financial viability will be an issue, especially for the high cost town like Moraga. Moraga is not in financial position to significantly subsidize this housing. Existing example, high density affordable income units can be attractive. There are other issues such as Moraga's very limited public transportation, impact on schools, infrastructure, the environment, and of course, fire risks. In summary, I believe that we in Moraga can succeed in this endeavor. It's a complex and an incomplete work in progress with real opportunities and risks to Moraga. I think uh, Carrie and I agree. We will travel this road with many sister communities. We're all in this together. It's gonna have to be a long fight or a long ongoing effort. And it would be great to have a range of housing opportunities, uh, options in Moraga, including for our, our, our worker uh, workforce, teachers, fire, police personnel, service workers, and small business owners, and others such as St. Mary's students. Thank you. All right, thank you both. We're next going to invite the candidates running for the two-year seat to the stage. Uh, we'll note that we invited both David Shapiro and Kendall Langan to the, be part of this event, but Kendall's declined. And so we just have David with us this evening. All right, David, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, we'd like to start with a 90 minute introduction. Or, sorry, 90 seconds, a 90 minute introduction. So um, clearly I'm devolving to my Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. My apologies. Yeah, we're just gonna give you 90 seconds. How about that? Sorry, uh, <clears throat> I've lived here in Moraga with my wife, Tina, for 26 years. Um, we raised our two daughters here. They went to all the uh, Moraga public schools, to CP, to JM, to, to uh, Camp Alindo. Uh, being in St. Mary's, it reminded me that both my wife and I worked full time and virtually every babysitter we ever had was a St. Mary's student and they were fantastic. Uh, and my younger daughter, Ruthie went to grew up and went to school with Steve Wallerke's uh, daughter, which is a really nice thing about Moraga because they all, everybody seems to know everybody and has some kind of connection and knows somebody's mom. So um, I have been a lawyer for 40, over 40 years. I started, I went to uh, state schools in New York uh, for undergrad and for law school. I worked at a law firm in New York for five, plus years. I then became a federal prosecutor in New York. Um, my wife and I then had a baby. We decided to move to Arizona and tried Tucson for a couple of years. And not surprisingly, we thought it was too hot. And we moved here and I got a job at the U.S. Attorney's Office here in San Francisco, where I stayed for six years. I was um, uh, a white collar uh, prosecutor. And back in New York, I had prosecuted mafia. Oh, that's it? I had prosecuted, can I just go for this, mafia and drug cases. And then I worked at a big uh, litigation, national litigation firm after I left the government. And um, now I work at small firms. So I do a whole variety of, of different kinds of litigation. I'll end there. I think one of the questions will probably pick up everything else so. I was going to yeah. say. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to give you two minutes to respond to each of the six questions that are posed. The first one is, how do you think Moraga will be impacted by the state of California laws that were passed with the intent of increasing affordable housing and how would you address them? Uh, I have uh, read quite a bit about that since I decided to, to run. And I think that the new mandate that we, uh, we allow for um, more affordable housing is actually something that should trigger us to really start thinking about both fixing up the 
uh, the, the, the Moraga Center and also the Ream Center to provide for housing uh, that will be affordable by teachers and people who work in Moraga, uh, but also as part of a bigger sort of plan on how we're going to sort of try to control traffic and how we're going to uh, build up commercial enterprises, which everybody always seems to want in Moraga. We want better restaurants. And the Canyon Club was a really great example of where some local people decided they were gonna to try to do something and it's been a big hit. That can happen again. And I think that if we use this state mandate as not something so much to worry about, but as something to, as a foundation to build up the things that everybody really wants, uh, it will be a, a, a net positive for, for, for the town. Thank you. A second question, besides development, what other challenges is Moraga facing and how do you propose that we address and fund them? Um, okay. Well, funding for a town that doesn't print money like the United States does, means that we have to try to oh, try to you know limit our expenses uh increase revenues not through taxes but think about ways to increase revenues and that can be through getting more uh residences and more commercial enterprises that increases the tax base and also trying to be creative which i feel like the town staff has done uh over the last few years in finding getting grants uh, from the federal government uh, in order to fund different kinds of projects that we we have, like the bridge replacement and the sinkhole at Ream. Um, what other challenges do we have? We have the challenges that every single person talks about, and that is we have too much traffic. We have not enough affordable housing. We have older people, and I feel like I am one of those people who might want to downsize, but maybe not want to move out of Moraga, but there really isn't a lot available for them. Uh, so. Those are the challenges we have, and those are the things I think that we have to work on uh, to try to, um, uh, to to try to advance the town while without creating any kind of chaos. Thank you. A third question: At town council meetings, how would you contribute to ensuring respectful, issue-focused dialogue while allowing for varying perspectives? Um, well, when I first started going to town council meetings, it was quite a while ago, and uh, my wife and I were both surprised at the lack of civility among some of the people who attended as citizens and some of the town council members. I have not seen a lack of civility now. I feel like the town council members, they don't always agree with each other. Um, but they respect each other and they listen to each other. And I think that's very important. Um, as a lawyer, as a trial lawyer, I always had to figure out what, how was I going to convince somebody, whoever the somebody was, a jury or a judge, uh, to do what I wanted that person to do. And you don't, you don't win those kinds of things by being a bully or being rude you win those kind of things by being prepared, by knowing what the rules are, knowing what the evidence is, and, and, and taking that and convincing whoever it is you want to convince of what, uh, of, to do what you want them to do. So how would I uh, contribute to that? I will use those skills that I have developed over the years to apply in the town council situation. And the fourth question, what in your experience makes you particularly well qualified to serve on the Moraga Town Council? Um, well, my experience is as a lawyer and not much else other than I do pottery for 25 years. And <laughs> I don't think I don't think that uh, people are coming to town council to, to look at my pottery. Uh, I think that. Um, what lawyers learn to do, uh, and I've touched on this before, what lawyers learn to do is. Uh, take complex facts or maybe not even such complex facts and marshal it and look at the law and see how it applies to the given situation. So for example, if, if the town council is discussing a, um, like the sidewalk issue that came up at a recent meeting I was listening to, uh, 
I have a I have a lot deep experience on looking at statutes and trying to figure out what they mean and figuring out how to apply them and maybe modifying them in order to satisfy objections to them. So uh, that's what I do. That's what I've done for 40 plus years. And uh, I think that I'll be uh, fully capable of doing that for the, on the town council. We have another housing question. Many cities and counties have passed ordinances requiring that new residential housing be all electric. Do you support the idea of Moraga passing such an ordinance and why or why not? Well, I certainly support the idea of us doing as much as we can voluntarily as residents to um, improve our environment. And that means, um, for example, getting rid of gra grass, uh, replacing gas stoves with induction stoves, uh, you know, all the different things that we now know are detrimental to the environment. So I'm certainly in favor of encouraging residents to do that. Whether we would want to make that a mandate for all new constructions, I just don't know enough about what the costs are involved and how that might impact our need to have affordable housing. I think it's probably doable, but I certainly, and I certainly would support if it, if it is doable, but um, it's something I just don't know enough about. All right, the sixth question, what measures can Moraga take in concert with other entities to promote more public transit and commuting to school and work? What measures? Uh, well, I was a big fan when I was working in San Francisco of the casual carpool. I used to take the casual carpool. Well, originally I used to take the bus up to BART and uh, then that kind of faded away as people, fewer and fewer people. I'd be like two people, two of us on the bus coming back down to uh, JM where I would get off the bus and then the casual carpool. And um, I, uh, I complained to the Akalani School Board, it was probably seven years ago, that there was too much traffic around the high schools and the other schools, and they ought to re-implement or implement a more uh, mandated school bus uh, requirement. And I didn't get a response from that, but I do, I would encourage the schools to, to try to reduce traffic uh, and have students, and I think a lot of students do use public transport, uh, transit, but it would be great if we didn't have as much traffic at the particular schools at the school rush hours every day. Um, I, for example, always forget that three o'clock is the rush hour yeah, because to me, it's more like should be six o'clock. Uh, so what measures can we take? We can try to encourage people to use mass transit. We can try to get people to um, to carpool, uh, we can try to get people to uh, not have one one kid in the car um, to school every day picking up. And I know that it's very convenient sometimes to do that, but when it negatively affects neighbors, then sometimes there's uh, you know there's that kind of a conflict. Um, I think the more people that use mass transit or public transit, the cheaper it becomes. Uh, we can use uh, incentives to developers uh, who want to build in um, in Ream or potentially in the Moraga Center uh, to to subsidize uh, uh, shuttle bus service. Um, I I know that that's been that people have thought of that, um, and I would encourage us to do that. All right, thank you, and we're going to conclude with a one minute closing statement. Okay, uh, so I want to thank everybody for coming and listening to me. Um, I want to thank Ellen Beans and, and Corey Cook and everybody else who set this up and thank everybody who came here and everybody who's watching at home and hasn't turned it off yet. Uh, there, there, are two, two, there are two ways I used to say this to people on a jury. There are only two ways you really can directly participate in government and that is be in government or vote, right? or be on a jury. And so when people would try to get off the jury, I'd tell them, you know, this is your, this is your chance to directly participate uh, in government. Um, so it's important that we all try to participate. Uh, and I, I have an opponent in this race. He's not here tonight. But if you think I will do a good job, I'll, I hope that you'll uh, vote for me. So thank you. Thank you very much.